الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين so today we're going to read through a hadith a hadith it's called a hadith qudsi and we're going to give a commentary on that hadith and it's a hadith that is very clear whoever reads it doesn't need an explanation but alhamdulillah we can add to it a beautiful commentary and that's what we're going to do but whoever reads this hadith alhamdulillah it's clear it's a clear hadith and you're going to see when i read it it's very clear the meaning is is clear so the hadith qudsi what's the difference between the hadith qudsi and the hadith nabawi the hadith qudsi basically is that the wording and the meaning is from Allah. Meaning it is the Prophet who is narrating the words of his Lord. And the Hadith Nabawi the Hadith Nabawi the prophetic Hadith the wording is from the Prophet but the meaning is from Allah. Like the Prophet like Allah Jalla says, hawa, that the Prophet does not speak out of desire. So when he speaks in a hadith, the meaning is from Allah, but the wording is his. But the hadith could see what's specific to it is that it's the Prophet who is narrating what Allah Jalla is saying, Allah's, Allah's words. But we do not use the hadith could see as an act of worship in in our prayer. I mean, we do not read uh, the Hadith Qudsi in our prayers or we do not recite the Hadith Qudsi like we would, we would recite the Qur'an, for example. No, obviously we read it and we benefit from it, but it is not at the level of the Qur'an. It is not at the level of the Qur'an. So in this Hadith, the Prophet wasallam, like I said, Hadith reported by Abidah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet وسلم, he narrates that his Lord said, Ya ibadi, O my servants. And he's going to repeat this, this calling ten times. Ten times Allah Jalla wala is going to say, Ya ibadi, O my servants. And Allah Jalla wala is repeating this sentence, O my servants out of mercy and compassion for His creation. When Allah Jalla wa is saying, Ya ibadi, O my servants, He is basically calling them to what will benefit them. He is calling them to what is what will be beneficial and, and what will benefit them and what will be good for them. So he says, Ya ibadi, O oh my servants, O oh my servants. And Al Ibad servants are of two types. You have the general meaning of servants and you have the specific meaning of servants. So the general meaning of servants, everything is abd to Allah. Everything is a servant to Allah Jalla wa Everything is submitted to Allah. May he be a believer, a disbeliever, a jinn, a human being, an angel, everything is Allah's servant. Mean that everything is submitted to Allah's decree. No one can escape Allah's decree. We are all ibad. Allah is Al Khaliq, He is the Creator, and we are Makhluk. We are created or the creation. Allah is Al Malik, He is the owner, and we are Mamlukun. We are Mamlukun, meaning we are Allah's possession. Allah owns us. We are Ibad, and Allah is a Sayyid. We are servants or slaves, and Allah is the master. No one can escape Allah's will, no one can escape Allah's 
qada, what we see in Arabic, qada meaning his will or his decision or his predestination or what he determines. Nobody can escape that. Nobody can see on the day of judgment, no, Ya Allah, I don't want to be resurrected. Don't resurrect me. No, everybody will be resurrected. If somebody has to be thrown into the hellfire, nobody can say, no, no, I'm not going to go to the hellfire. I prefer going over there. No. If you, is it written that you go to the hellfire, you will go to the hellfire. Everyone is submitted to Allah in that sense. That's ubudiyah, that is servants in a general meaning. Then after in a specific meaning, a specific meaning, those are the believers. Those are the ones who, by their own choice, they have chosen to submit to Allah's will, to obey His commands, to worship Him alone. And that is Al-Ibad, those are the specific servants of Allah. And Allah Jalla He says about them, Inna ibadi laysa laka alihim sultan. He says that to a shaitan, that indeed my servants, you have no authority upon them or over them. Meaning my, my believers, my servants who have chosen to worship me and, and obey me. But this hadith, Allah Jalla Wala, He's speaking to all of the creation. The jinn and the human being, the believers and the disbelievers. He is calling out to all of them. So the first thing that he says is, Ya ibadi inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadhalamu Oh, my servants, I have forbidden injustice and oppression upon myself and I make it between you or I and I um, yes, and I make it also forbidden between you so do not wrong one another. So Allah Jalla Wala in this first sentence of the hadith, He informs us that He does not wrong anyone. He is unjust against anyone. That injustice does not come from Allah Jalla Wala. And this in many verses in the Quran, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامِ لِلْعَبِيدِ And your Lord is not unjust towards His servants. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ That indeed Allah does not, does never, Allah never wrongs anyone, not even the weight of a dust particle. Allah Jalla Wala, He wrongs no one. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسِ لَا يَظْلِمُ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا وَلَكِنَّ النَّاسَ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ That indeed Allah does not wrong people, but it is people who wrong themselves. So Allah Jalla Wala, out of His mercy, out of His kindness, out of His grace, and His, and His compassion, and out of His perfect justice, He does not wrong anyone. And He has forbid upon Himself injustice. Does that mean that Allah Jalla Wala is not capable of being unjust? Do we say that? Does that mean that Allah is incapable of being unjust? So Allah, He forbid injustice upon himself but did he forbid injustice upon himself because he is incapable of being unjust huh can somebody answer that question is Allah incapable of being unjust is he capable or not of being unjust yes yes is Allah capable of being unjust huh if I say right now the wall is not is just the wrong the wall does not wrong anyone and is that something praiseworthy am i praising the wall for not being unjust if i say the wall doesn't want all oh, the wall doesn't wrong anyone or if a dog passes by and i say the dog doesn't wrong anyone is that a form of praise to the wall or to the to the dog huh no it's not it's not a form of praise it's not a form. Can the, can the wall wrong anyone? Can a dog wrong anyone? Huh? Huh? No, but generally speaking. <laughs> can a tree wrong anyone? No. All right. But Allah Jalla Wala, He can wrong if He wills. فَعَالٌ بِمَا يُرِيدٌ 
Allah does whatever He wants. Who can forbid Allah from doing something? No one. Who can prevent Allah from doing something? No one. He's fa'alun lima yurid. He does whatever He wants. But the fact that He is capable of wronging, but He does not wrong, that is what makes it praiseworthy. That He does not wrong anyone. Did you understand this? As if we say that, oh, the carpet doesn't wrong anyone. No, that's not praiseworthy. That's not a compliment to the carpet. The carpet can't wrong, nor can he uh, do justice. He can do nothing. But Allah Jalla Wala can wrong. He has, the, he has the capacity to do so. But He does not do it out of mercy and compassion and kindness and perfect justice. That's why He doesn't do it. Same thing if, if a king now, somebody who's a king, if he's a just king, all right, in the country, and he does not wrong anybody, are people going to praise him or not? They're going to praise him. Why? Because he is the king. If he wants to put people in prison, he can put people in prison. If he wants to lock up people and kill people, steal their money, he can do so. But if he is just, people are going to see that as, as a praiseworthy act. If he's not unjust, people are going to see that as something praiseworthy. Because he's capable to do it, but he doesn't do it. He chooses not to do so. But that's on the level of the creation. We're talking about the Creator. So Allah, out of His mercy, subhanAllah, He has forbidden upon Himself injustice, oppression. And Allah Jalla Wala can forbid upon Himself what He wills, and He can make mandatory upon Himself what He wills. And of the things that He has made mandatory upon Himself is Ar-Rahmah, His mercy. Allah Jalla Wala says, كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah has written upon Himself mercy. That He will be merciful. That His mercy will come before His anger. That is something that Allah Jalla Wala has written upon Himself. Nobody forced Him to be merciful. He put that upon Himself. And He has the right to do so. Same thing in a hadith reported by Mu'ad. Ibn Jabal, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Ya Mu'ad, أَتَدْلِي مَا حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ وَمَا حَقُّ الْعِبَادِ عَلَى اللَّهِ O Mu'ad, do you know what the rights of Allah is over the servants and what the right of the servants is over Allah? Then he said that the rights of, the, of Allah over His servants and يَعْبُدُهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْعَ That they worship Him and they give no partners to Him in worship. That's Allah's rights upon us. And then he said, and do you know what? The right of the servants is upon Allah. What is our right upon Allah? And he said, Allah wa Rasul Alam. Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, and la yu'adhiba man la yushlika bihi shay'ah. That he will not punish whoever does not give partners to him in worship. Do we as servants, do we have a, a right over Allah in reality? Do we have a right over Allah? When you have a right over somebody, that means you could tell them, do this, do that. I have a right over you. Do we have a right over Allah? You have no right. But Allah Jalla Wala in this hadith, they call it Haqqu Tafaddu. It's a grace, it's a favor of Allah, that Allah, He made it mandatory upon Himself, that if the servant, He meets him on the day of judgment, and he did not commit shirk, he did not worship other than Allah, then Allah Jalla Wala will not punish him. Then Allah Jalla Wala will not punish him. And that is something that he has made mandatory upon himself. Okay, so Allah can make mandatory, he can forbid upon himself what he wills, and he can make mandatory upon himself what he wills, and what he has forbidden upon himself is injustice. And because he has forbidden injustice upon himself, he has made injustice haram between us. You don't have the right to wrong someone else. And injustice is of three types, okay? The first type is a shirku billah. That's the greatest injustice. So injustice, what does injustice mean? In Arabic they say, is that you put somebody something, but not at its right place. So when you worship Allah, you are putting Worship in the right place. Why? Because only Allah has the right to be worshipped. 
But if you worship other than Allah, then you have created, you have committed the greatest of injustices. Why? Because worship which is Allah's right alone, you have placed it somewhere else where it shouldn't be. You guys get that? You understand this? That's why Allah in the Quran, He relates the, 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 the saying of Luqman, who said to his son, Inna shirka la zulmun azim, that indeed shirk is the greatest injustice. Why? Because this right of Allah that should be only for Allah, you're giving it to somebody else. Same thing if now you work for me. Imagine I have a shop and you work for me. One month you worked every day, 10 hours. You even, you even did, you added some hours to get a better salary. And at the end of the month, at your salary, which is your rights, I give it to somebody else. What does that feel like in your heart? That's injustice. So Allah's right is His worship. So giving His worship to somebody else, that's the greatest of injustices. Then the second type of injustice is the injustice that we commit against ourselves. And that's by sinning. When we sin, we have committed injustice against ourselves. Why? Because it is as if we have taken our souls or ourselves and we have placed them in a place where it shouldn't be. Normally yourself, your soul, you should place it in the worship and obedience of Allah. But once you take your soul and you place it there where it shouldn't be in committing sin, you have committed injustice against your own self. And the third type of injustice obviously is the injustice that we commit towards another human being. And that injustice is not forgiven by Allah Jalla wala, except if the person, He forgives you. So that on the day of judgment, if you wrong somebody, if you attack somebody's honor, if you backbited somebody, if you took the money of somebody, if you hit somebody, you will not be forgiven by Allah until that person, he forgives you or he takes his right upon you. And what is taking his rights? You all heard the hadith of the Muflis, the bankrupt, the Prophet said in the authentic hadith, when he asked the companions, do you know who the bankrupt is? And they said the bankrupt is the one who doesn't have dirham, doesn't have money, wala mata, he doesn't have wealth, he doesn't have goods. And the Prophet said, no, the bankrupt is not that one. He said, Inna al-muflisa min ummati man yati yawm al-qiyama bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakat. That the muflis, the bankrupt, is the one who comes on the day of judgment and he has, he fasted and he gave zakat, charity, and he, and he, and he prayed. But he comes on the day of judgment with sins. فَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا He insulted that one. وَقَذَفَ هَذَا And he accused that person of, 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 of fornication. He wrongly accused somebody of committing fornication. وَيَأْتِي وَأَكَلَ مَنْ هَذَا And he consumed the wealth of that person. Meaning he consumed, he wrongly consumed the wealth of that person. Maybe by stealing his money, maybe by using his money without his consent, and so on and so forth. Maybe by tricking him and, and deceiving him, he consumed the money of that person. And lots of things, and he hit that person, and he shed the blood of that person. What's going to happen? The Prophet said, That the one that you have wronged, Allah Jalla wa is going to take your hasanat, He's going to give it to that person. Until the judgment is finished. Until, yani, until that the wrong that you have committed towards others is repaired. And if you run out of hasanat, and that the wrong that you've committed towards others is it still, is it still, uh, how can I say you, the, the, the you, you haven't fully uh, reimbursed the people that you've wronged with your hasanats, what's going to happen is that once you're out of hasanats, you're going to take their sayyats. They're going to give you their sins. So in the end, you will have no more hasanat, you only have sayyats. And then the Prophet said, Then that person, because all he would have left is just sayyats, 
he'll be thrown into the hellfire. So this is why, subhanAllah, we have to be aware of injustice. We have to be aware of injustice. The Prophet said, And fear or protect yourself against injustice because indeed injustice is darkness on the day of judgment. And even Allah Jalla Wala, He answers, He answers the dua, He answers the supplication of the unjust, of the one who was wrong, even if he was a non-Muslim. If you wrong a non-Muslim and he makes dua against you, that dua will be answered. Just to, to show you the, the severeness of injustice. The Prophet so said, and fear the supplication of the one who is wrong because there is no barrier between him and Allah and that Allah will answer that dua so don't wrong no one don't think because he's a non-Muslim I can wrong him, no he will come and he will ask for his rights and if he makes dua to Allah Allah will answer his dua so we have to fear, we have to be afraid to fall into, into, into injustice. Then he says, Ya ibadi kullukum dalun illa man hadaytu, fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my servants, all of you are misguided, all of you are astray except those who I, I have guided. So ask me for guidance, I will guide you. Ask me for guidance, I will guide you. So subhanAllah, when we read this sentence, we see that it is an imperative that we always seek guidance from Allah all day, every day, so that we do not go astray. Because we are all misguided, we are all astray, except if Allah Jalla Wala guides us, then we are on the right path. This also shows an encouragement to learning your religion. By learning your religion, what's in the Quran, what's in the Sunnah, the teachings in the Quran and the Sunnah, by learning this, you will not go astray. Why did Allah Jalla Wala call the Christians and whoever are on their path? He called them in the Quran. What do we say in Al Fatiha? Nor those who are Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us on the right path, not the alayhim, not the path of those who have uh, who have uh, earned your anger. Nor the ones who went astray. If you read the, the commentaries of the Quran, they say it's the Christians. But why do they say it's the Christians? And it's not only limited to the Christians. But why are the Christians astray? Because they acted without knowledge. They worshipped Allah without knowledge, so that caused them to go astray. And whoever worships Allah without knowledge, whoever acts without knowledge, then he has gone astray. That is why the people of innovation, the people who innovate, who do deeds, and we ask them, where is this in the Quran and the Sunnah, what you're doing? And they have no response. They have gone astray. Same as the Christian. If you go to any service, and the brother knows, you go to any service on Sunday, they have the guitar, they have the drums, you know, they're singing and all that, you know. Did Jesus do that? Was that the worship of Isa a.s.? Music and all that, that is, is that how they worshiped Allah? Is that how they got closer to Allah? They do so many things that has nothing to do with what, with the message of Isa a.s. So they went astray. So this is very important. It's the first step. If we want guidance for ourselves, we have to make the effort to learn our religion, to know what is truth and what is falsehood, to know what is guidance in our religion and what is misguidance. 
Even Allah Jalla Wala has said about the Prophet and we found you, not misguided, but we found you unaware, unguided. Then we guided you. Meaning that the Prophet before that the Quran was revealed, he did not have knowledge of what was in the Quran. Nor did he have knowledge of faith. I mean, he didn't know the 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 tafasil, the um, the um, كيف هو التفاصيل الإيمان بالإنجليزية التفاصيل ال the details بارك الله فيك he didn't know the deep details of إيمان the prophet didn't know the details of إيمان yes he worshipped Allah he believed in Allah they didn't know all the details of the names of the angels names of the prophets what's going to happen on the day of judgment and so on and so forth it's Allah جل وعلا who guided him to that at the beginning he was unaware of that. So we have to ask Allah Jalla Wala that He guides us and that He puts us, He puts us on the right path. Because that is that is the path of success. Yani yeah, if Allah guides you, then you have succeeded. This is why in Al Fatiha, after praising Allah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ya Rahman Rahim Malik Yomidin, Iya Kin Abud Wa Yakin Astain, what is the first thing that we ask Allah? Guide me on the right path. If you're guided on the right path, it's the right path that would lead you to Jannah. That's it. If Allah guides you in this dunya and you die upon that guidance, Alhamdulillah, you will be guided to Jannah. Easy as that. That is why people, when they're going to enter Jannah, they're going to say, وَقَالُوا and they're going to say to the people of Jannah, Alhamdulillahi الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله the people of Jannah were going to enter Jannah, they're going to fully acknowledge that they were only able to attain these blessings in Jannah. It's all thanks to Allah Jalla Wala. All praise is due to Allah, the one who guided us to this. And we would not have been guided to this if it weren't for Allah's guidance. They know that all these blessings that they're going to enjoy now in Jannah is because Allah Jalla Wala in this dunya guided them to knowledge and to act upon that knowledge, to do good deeds. And those good deeds were a cause, were a means for them to go to Jannah. And this guidance is of two types, all right? Guidance is of two types. There's a guidance that everybody can possess that mostly the messengers possess, but even you can possess. And this is showing the way, right? So all of us can guide people. If somebody comes a non-Muslim, you can guide them towards Islam. You can show them the right path towards Islam. Allah Jalla wa says about the Prophet ﷺ, and indeed you guide towards the right path. Meaning that he shows the path, the right path. What is Islam? How to worship your Lord. How to get close to your Lord. How to be pleased by Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he showed that to mankind, didn't he? Did everybody follow him? No. But he did guide them in that sense. He showed them the path. Also Allah says, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمْيَا فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمَى عَلَى الْهُدَى And when it came to Thamud, we guided them, but they preferred blindness over guidance. Meaning that Allah, through His Messengers, He guided Thamud. Meaning He showed the right path to Thamud. But they preferred their blindness. Meaning they preferred their own ignorance over Al-Huda, over the right path. So that is the guidance that all of us can have. Then the second guidance is what they call Hidayat uh, uh, Tawfiq. This is when Allah Jalla Wala, He guides you, He puts you on that path. So I can show you the path, but I can't put you on that path. And I can't make you walk on that path. The only one who can do so is, is Allah Jalla Wala. So like I said, the Prophet He showed the path, but not everybody followed. But those who followed His path, that is only in Allah's hand. That guidance is only in Allah's hand. Only Allah Jalla Wala possesses that guidance. Like He says, that indeed you do not guide whoever you love, but Allah guides whoever He wills. And this is the guidance, meaning the guidance of Tawfiq. So ask, Allah is telling us, 
فاستهدوني اهلك اهدكم اهدكم عفوا so ask for my guidance and I will guide you سبحان الله and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in many a hadith we find in his dua that he he sought guidance he would seek guidance and amongst the hadith is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib the fourth khalifa radiallahu anhu where the Prophet وسلم, he ordered him to say, Qul, he said, Qul, say, Allahumma inni as'aluk al-huda was sadad. Oh Allah, I ask you for guidance and for sadad. Sadad meaning that, that I have success and steadfastness in all of my, uh, in all of my affairs. Or he said, Allahumma hdini wa sadidni. Same thing, oh Allah, guide me and give me this sadad. And this is something that the Prophet وسلم, he ordered his beloved cousin this dua that he ordered him to, to, to say that he asks for he asks for guidance. After that, Allah Taala says, "Ya ibadi, kullukum jaiun illa man atamtuhu fastatimuni utimkum. Ya ibadi, kullukum arin illa man kasoutu fastaksuni aksukum." Now this, these two sentences are in relation with a rizq, a rizq, the sustenance. That the, the Allah Jalla is saying, "Oh my servants, all of you are hungry except those who I feed. So ask or seek food from me, and I will feed you. And oh my servants, all of you are naked except those who I clothe. So ask." Ask me to clothe you and I will clothe you. And Allah Jalla says, And there is not a creature on earth except that it is upon Allah to provide it. So Allah Jalla is a razzaq and provides is from Him alone. He says also Jalla Wala, Do you see? what you are sowing. You see these seeds that you are sowing in the ground. Are you the ones who make them grow and they become fruit and they become vegetables and so on and so forth? Or are we the ones who make them grow? If we will, we would make these vegetables or these fruits, we would make them like straw. You know straw? It's all dry and all that. There's no wheat in it. We would have made it like straw. You would not be able to benefit from it. Even in terms of food, you could not, you can't eat straw. That's the animals who eat straw, but you can't eat straw. If Allah says, if He willed, He would have made it like straw. If He willed, you know, everything that we plant in the ground, when it comes out, it would come out all dry and and in little be, be, uh, little crumbles and and pieces like that, you know, we will not be able to benefit from it. But no, alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah and all praises to do to Him, alhamdulillah, vegetables come out and we're able to benefit from them and we're able to eat from them. Also, He says, uh, 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 and He says, um, and you see the water that you're drinking. Did you cause this rain to come down from the from the clouds, or are we the ones who cause it to come down? And if we will, this water that comes down from the sky, we could have made it salty. So I'm sure everybody in my house will be thirsty, right? Imagine you're thirsty right now, and at iftar time I give you a nice, nice uh, cup of, of, of seawater. <laughs> How are you going to react? You're going to spit that out and say, Brother, give me fresh water. I want fresh water. See, this is it's Allah who's providing us with this fresh water. Alhamdulillah. So we have to seek a risk from Allah. We have to have, we have to even have, put our trust in Allah that Allah Jalla is going to provide us. That is something that's very important. You know, sometimes we get caught up in this dunya. And we forget that it's Allah Jalla who is the ultimate provider. That we can only do means. We 
can only wake up and do deeds, but in the end, all provision is from Allah Jalla wa Allah. There's a hadith where the Prophet he said, لو أنكم قلتم توكلون على الله أو لو ولو أنكم إيوا كنتم توكلون على الله حق توكله if you were to rely upon Allah as you should لا رزقتم كما يرزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتغدو بطانا if you have true trust in Allah in terms of your risk Allah is going to give you His provisions, then you would be sustained and Allah will give you your provision like Allah gives the provision of the bird who leaves the morning, he leaves his nest with an empty stomach and he returns at night with a full stomach for the food. But you see, subhanAllah, the bird he had to leave the nest. Yeah, I mean, that's real tawakul. You don't stay in the nest the whole day and you know, hopefully, you know, a worm comes down or... No, you have to leave the nest and you have to go. But if you make the effort, Allah Jalla will provide. Alhamdulillah. Then after he said, and this is very... The, the next sentence is a very strong, very powerful sentence that instills great hope in the believer's heart. Ya ibadi inna kum tukhti'una bil layli wal nahar wa ana akhfiru dhunuba jamia fastaghfiruni akhfir lakum. O my servants, Indeed, you make mistakes, you commit sins, nights and day. But me, I forgive all sins. So seek my forgiveness and I will forgive you. Seek my forgiveness and I will forgive you. And you all know the hadith of the Prophet we said, Kulu bani Adam khatta wa khayrul khattain at-tawabun. That every son of Adam is a sinner. He commits lots of sins and the best of them is the one who repents to, to Allah. So Allah Jalla wa He forgives all sins, whatever the amounts or whatever, not just the amount, but whatever the size and whatever the amount and whatever the number. If you seek Allah's forgiveness sincerely, Allah Jalla wa forgive you, but you have to seek Allah's forgiveness. You have to raise your hands and sincerely uh, ask for Allah's forgiveness with regrets and leaving the sins that you are committing. And these are two ways. There's two ways to seek Allah's forgiveness. One is that you seek Allah's forgiveness with a love, with your, your tongue. Meaning that you, you say, Oh Allah, forgive me. You raise your hands and you make dua, Oh Allah, forgive me, astaghfirullah, Allah maghfirli, and so on and so forth. That is one of the ways by which you can seek Allah's forgiveness. Other way you can seek Allah's forgiveness is is through your good actions. Through your good actions, you can seek Allah's forgiveness and that would be a means for your sins to be forgiven. For example, there's a hadith where the Prophet he said, مَنْ قَالَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِي فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةَ غُفِرَتْ خَطَيَاهُ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مِثْلَ زَبَدِ الْبَحْرِ The Prophet he said that whoever says SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, right? SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, 100 times in a day, his sins will be forgiven even if they are as much as the foam of the sea. See those bubbles on the sea? That's the foam of the sea. Even if your sins are as much as the foam of the sea, if you say SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, your sins will be forgiven. So through that good action, through that good deed, you are seeking Allah's forgiveness. Same thing the Prophet or Uthman, anhu, he made wudu, all right? He made wudu, in a perfect way, meaning that he started by washing his hands three times. Then he did al istinshaq wal madmula. He rinsed his mouth, he put uh, water in his nose, he washed his face three times, he washed his his hands or his arm or his hand to his his uh, his elbow three times, the right the right the right arm, then the left arm three times, then he wiped his head, then he washed his feet three times. After doing that, he said, anhu, He said, I saw the Prophet make wudu like I just did. Then he said, وقال, and, he said and the Prophet he said, Whoever 
does wudu like the wudu that I just did. You perfect your wudu. ثم صلى ركعتين. Then he prays two rakahs. لا يحدث فيه ما نفسه. And during that, those two prayers, he doesn't have worldly thoughts. You had to nafsa, dhima nafsa means that he doesn't have worldly thoughts. He doesn't have thoughts that are not connected and related to his prayer. Alright, so whoever prays these two prayers and he's focused during these two rakahs, sorry, and he's focused. لا يحدث فيه ما نفسه. He's not having thoughts. You know, he's not thinking about dunya stuff or things that are not connected to prayer. You know, he's thinking about Liverpool and, and Manchester and all that. No, no, he's thinking about his prayer. The Prophet also said, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ That his previous, his past sins will be forgiven. And that's a hadith that's muttafaqun ali. Hadith that is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. So you see, through these deeds, those actions, you can seek Allah's, Allah's forgiveness. And obviously there's lots of hadith, you know, that and ayat in the Quran that show Allah's forgiveness, that إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَقْرُنُ جُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا That indeed Allah forgives all sins. The Prophet he, he said in a hadith, Wallahi inni la astaghfirullah wa atubu alayhi fi al-yawmi akthar min sab'ina marra That indeed I, I, I seek forgiveness to Allah and I repent to Him during the day more than 70 times. And what's intended here is not the number, it's not 70, they do it 70 times, but what's intended by these type of numbers, 70 or 100, is that the Prophet he would he would uh, do lots of istighfar during the day. And Allah forgave, forgave his past and, and, and future sins, but he would do this also then to, to raise and to, 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 to rise, uh, to be elevated in, in, in darajat, in degrees. And also, you know, Allah Jalla, the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, مَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ تَسُرَّهُ صَحِفَةُ فَلْيُكْثِرُ فِيهَا مِنَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ that whoever on the day of judgment will be happy or will love to see his record uh, whoever, sorry, whoever loves to be happy when he sees his record of good deeds then he should increase istighfar and he should increase istighfar and if he wants that when on the day of judgment when you have to read your deeds especially the good ones that you feel joy then Increase is sifat. Also, the Prophet said in the Hadith, "Tuba liman wajda fi sahifatihi istighfar kathira." And tuba, tuba is, a, is, a, is can mean jannah or paradise or a good situation or it's a tree in jannah for the one who finds in the record of his good deeds. He finds what? He finds lots of istighfar. So alina bi istighfar upon us is to is to seek Allah's forgiveness. Uh, day and night. After that, he says, "Ya ibadi, inna kum lanta bluhu dhari, fatadurruni, wa lanta bluhu nafi, fatadfaruni." O my servants, basically, you will not be able to harm me, nor will you be able to benefit me. So, by doing good and by worshiping Allah and by obeying, obeying Allah, we are not uh, benefiting Allah. You know, and by uh, committing sin, and may it be the sin, the sin, the worst of sins, which is disbelief, we are not harming Allah Jalla Ula. Because Allah Jalla Ula is Ghani. He is, He doesn't need His creation. He is perfect in His attributes. He has perfect authority and power. So our, us disobeying Him does not harm Him. And us obeying him does not benefit him. And it is as if Allah Jalla Wala is saying us, is telling to us, or saying to us, that I've only asked you to do istighfar not because I need it, or because that your sins they harm me, but I've only asked you to do istighfar because it benefits me. Uh, because it's, it benefits you. Because istighfar benefits you. That is why. I have not asked you to do istighfar because your sins, they harm me. But it's for you that I've asked to do istighfar. So that it benefits you. 
And Allah Jalla wa says also, وَقَالَ مُوسَى إِن تَكْفُرُوا أَنْتُمْ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ حَمِيدٌ And Musa, he said to Fir'aun and to his people, if you disbelieve, you and everyone on earth, then indeed Allah is ghani and Allah is rich. Allah does not need you. And He is hamid and He is worthy of all praise. And it does, does not affect him in, in any shape or any form. Same thing, then he repeats this, يَا عِبَادِي لَوْ أَنَّ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ وَإِنْسَكُمْ وَجِنَّكُمْ كَانُوا عَلَىٰ أَتْقَى قَلْبِ رَجُلٍ وَاحِدٍ مِنْكُمْ مَا زَادَ مَا زَادَ ذَلِكَ فِي مُلْكِ شَيْءٍ O my servants, if the first of you or the last of you, the, man, the men of you and the jinn of you were all pious or were all as pious as the most pious of men amongst you, that will not increase my dominion in anything. It will not increase my dominion in anything. Same thing, though, And same thing that if all of you were as wicked and as evil as the most wicked person on earth, then that would not diminish and decrease my dominion, my supreme power, my supreme authority in nothing. So Allah Jalla wa subhanAllah, He does not at all need us, and nor does our obedience benefit Him, nor does our sin harm Him. Rather, it is us who are in great need of Allah. We are in great need of Allah, and we are in great need of Al Islam, of our religion. Allah Jalla wa says, Say, Prophet, to these people, do not regard your Islam as a favor to me. Your Islam is not a favor that you're doing to Allah. Rather, it is Allah who has done you a favor by guiding you to, to Iman, if you are truthful. Then he says, so there's only, there's only two sentences left, inshallah, and the hadith is finished. Then he says, Ya ibadi, Law anna awwalakum, wa akhirakum, wa insakum, wa jinnakum, qamu fi sa'idin wahid, fa sa'aluni fa a'taytu kulla insani mas'alata, ma naqasa dhalika min ma'indi, illa kama yankusu al-makhiyatu, idha udkhil al-bahr. He says, oh, my servants, if the first of you and the last of you and the jinn and the ins and the human beings, you all stood up in one place and you all requested something from me and I gave every single one of you what you requested, that would not diminish and reduce and decrease what I have any more than if you take a needle and you dip it into the sea. What is that going to decrease and diminish of the sea? Nothing. If you take a needle and you dip it in the sea, it's going to diminish nothing of the sea. This is the same thing. If everyone asked something to Allah, and Allah Jalla Wala gave everyone what they asked for, that will diminish in anything what Allah Jalla Wala has. SubhanAllah. And He gave that image of, of, of the of the needle that is dipped in in the sea. وَلِلَّهِ خَزَائِنُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs the treasuries of the heavens and the earth. There is, there is even a hadith where the Prophet said, it's a beautiful hadith, he said, or something, hadith, he said, أَنْفِقْ أُلْفِقْ عَلِيكَ He said, O son of Adam, spend and I will compensate you for your spending. Spend and I will compensate you for your spending. And then he said, Indeed, the right hand of Allah is full. And He's full with good. He's full with, with grace and favors. That its fullness is not diminished by the continuous spending night and day. So Allah Jalla He spends for us night and day. But that does not diminish in anything the fullness of of his right hand. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
Have you seen what he has spent since he has created the heavens and the earth? Indeed, nothing was decreased of what it was in his right hand. Since Allah has created the heavens and the earth, he's been spending and providing and giving his creation and that did not decrease and diminish anything which is in his right hand. So this shows, like I say, Allah's perfection, his supreme authority and his 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 um his grace towards his servants. Then the the last sentence he says Ya ibadi inna ma hiya a'malukum wa hsiha lakum thumma uwafikum iyaha faman wajda khayran falyahmadillah wa man wajda ghayra dhalik fala yalumanna illa nafsa O my servants these are your deeds meaning that all you have is your deeds O my servants all you have is your deeds uhsila uhsiha lakum and your deeds, I have recorded them for you. I mean, Allah Jalla Wala, He has recorded our deeds. He has written them down through, obviously, the, through the, the angels and also in the Loh and Mahfud. All the deeds are written down. Also, He preserves our deeds and He causes them not, He causes them not to, to be lost. Allah Jalla Wala, He preserves our deeds and He causes them not to be lost. So Allah Jalla Wala, all we have is saying that's all we have is our deeds. And his deeds are recorded. Indeed, everything that you have done, Allah has recorded it in numbers. Nothing is hidden from him. And this also proves in this hadith that what is important is our deeds. Not whatever the origin or the background or uh, you know the the whatever tribe you come from, you know that's not what's that's, that's not what's important. What's important is your deeds. Inna akramakum inna Allahi that the one, the the, the most honorable, the, the the best of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. And our deeds, we will be rewarded for our deeds. Wala tu jazauna illa ma kuntum ta'amanun, and you will not be rewarded except for what you you have done. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَاهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَاهُ And whoever does a good deed of the weight of a small ant, he will see it. And whoever does an evil deed of the weight of a small ant, he will, he will see it. إِنَّا لَا نُدِيرُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا And indeed we do not cost, or not cause, sorry, the deed of someone who does the deed of someone who does good to be lost. So Allah Jalla He has recorded all of our deeds, the good ones and the bad ones, to an extent that we even have ayat in the Quran that that relates what the Mujrimin are going to say when they're going to see this book, this record of deeds that Allah Jalla He did not leave the smallest of sins to go unlisted. And the record of deeds will be made open and you will see the wicked in fear of what is written in it. The Mujrimin, they'll have fear because they know what they have done in this dunya. They know the kufr, they know the disbelief, they know the sins that they have committed. And they will say, woe to us, and we are doomed. What kind of book is this that it doesn't leave any sin, small or large, unlisted? Any, everything that you did is going to be there, it's going to be written. And they will find whatever they did present, it will be written before them. And your Lord will never wrong anyone, subhanAllah. He will never wrong anyone. Then he said, ثُمَّ أُوَفِّيكُمْ إِيَّاهَا So after that, Allah Jalla Wala, He's telling us that all you have is your deeds, and I recorded your deeds, 
then on the day of judgment you will be rewarded for those deeds. فَمَنْ وَجْدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ And whoever finds good, then he should thank Allah. And whoever finds other than good, then he can only blame his own self. He can only blame his own self. How many deeds have we done and we've forgotten? But Allah Jalla did not forget. He recorded them. أَحْصَاهُ اللَّهُ وَنَسُوهُ Allah has recorded those deeds while they have forgotten them. But every single deed that we have done is recorded and will be present on the Day of Judgment. And there's so many ahadith that, that mention this. So whoever finds good, then he should thank Allah. And the person is going to thank Allah. Why? Because he knows that it's only thanks to Allah that he was able to do those good deeds. And whoever finds other than that, then he should only blame himself. Why he should blame himself? Because every single human being is his own accountant. Everybody is responsible of themselves. Everybody can only help hold themselves accountable, with their own accountants. And they know what they have done, good or bad. They know what they have done, good or bad. Allah Jalla says, But in insan wa ala nafsihi basira. And indeed the human being, he is shahid, and he is basira, meaning he, he is a witness of, over what he did. He knows what he did. Walau alqa ma'adira. Even if on the day of judgment, He's going to give lots of excuses. But every single person knows what he did. So we ask Allah Jalla to not be of those who on the Day of Judgments are going to blame our own selves for what we have done in this dunya. Rather we ask Allah to be of those who are going to say, Alhamdulillah, we're going to thank Allah because we found good in, in our books and our records of, of good deeds.